Hi and welcome to part 2 of a Calculus 1 video on derivatives of logarithms and exponential functions. Okay, I have five examples that I want to go through with you in this video, so I'm going to go ahead and get started right away here. Find the derivatives, so if I was given y equals x to the 5x, I cannot use power rule because if we subtract 1 to our exponent, we're not getting a constant value. So I don't have a constant in my exponent. It doesn't look like x to the 7th, for example. And I can't necessarily just use that exponential function rule because that applies when our base is a constant. So what you should notice in this first example here is that neither my base nor my exponent is constant. So I have to use natural log properties here so that I can rewrite this original equation. So it'll look like natural log of y equals natural log of x to the 5x. And now because of that natural log, I can move the 5x down in front and I'm going to over exaggerate that product dot there. Certainly parentheses could be used as well, like so as long as you see that we have a product. So now I'm going to differentiate, but I'm going to use the product rule on the right-hand side of that equation. So the derivative of natural log of y is y prime over y, right? The derivative of that argument over itself equals, here's my product rule. So the derivative of 5x is 5. I will leave natural log of x alone plus, now I will leave 5x alone, and the derivative of natural log of x, again, it's the derivative of that argument, which would be 1 over itself. And again, some people have memorized that the derivative of natural log of x is 1 over x, which would be fine as well. Okay, so I'm asked to solve for y prime, because remember, you were given an equation y equals, and you are asked to find its derivative. And so in order to do that, I need to solve for y prime. So there's my original. So I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by y. When you do that, you've got to multiply the entire right-hand side of the equation by y. So I get y prime equals, I'm going to put all this in brackets here, 5 natural log of x plus, and I could divide those x's, so it's just plus 5 times the y. Well, I know what y was. y was the original, and that original is x to the 5x. So there is my y prime. Okay, question 5. It's going to look similar, but it's going to involve some trigonometry. What you should again notice is that you don't have a constant in your base, and you do not have a constant in your exponent. So you cannot use the exponential function derivative rule, nor can you use your power rule. So I have to take the natural log of both sides, so here we go. Natural log of f of x equals natural log of x to the sine x. And we do that with purpose, because again, this is going to now allow me to bring my exponent down in front, so it'll be natural log of my function equals sine of x times natural log of x. And this, again, is going to look similar, just with different functions, but I, again, when I differentiate, I have to use product rule. So I'm going to do the derivative of the left-hand side. So derivative of natural log of an argument would be the derivative of that argument, so f prime of x over itself, so f prime over f equals, now I will use product rule. So derivative of sine of x is cosine of x. I will leave natural log of x alone, plus I'll leave sine x alone, and derivative of natural log of x, we talked about that a second ago, is 1 over x. Now in order to solve for f prime, you should multiply both sides by your original function, so that will divide, and again, I'm going to be very cautious here with the right-hand side because you have two terms. Remember, product rule will separate it into two terms. I want to make sure I multiply the whole right-hand side by f of x. So that's going to be where I use the brackets. So f prime of x equals, there's really nothing I can do to simplify cosine of x times natural log of x, so I'll just leave that alone. And I could write sine x over x if that looks better to you. 
for the second term, all times f of x, which was the original function, which is x to the sine x. And I am done. So when you look back at these two problems, even though their functions don't necessarily look the same, one involves trig and one does not, the overall process should look very similar to you in both cases. Now I'd like you to take a look at the next two problems that we're going to be working through finding these derivatives. And what I would like you to notice is that neither one of them have a natural log to begin with, similar to the last two. So why are we talking about it when we're talking about really natural log differentiation? Well, we're also talking about exponential differentiation, right? And they both have an e there somewhere, so that might be why. Or sometimes natural log can help us. So when we look at the case for number six, I'm going to actually do a rewrite here. And I am going to show you natural log differentiation here. Why? Well, because I have a product in the numerator, I have a product in the denominator, I have quotient rule, I have chain rule, chain rule, right? So I have a lot going on. Anytime when you have that many rules going on, maybe natural log can help you simplify things. So I'm going to go through a rewrite here. And I'm going to take the natural log of both sides. And then because of my natural log properties, I do have the ability to expand the right-hand side of that equation. So it becomes natural log, any of these products here in the numerator will be adding, and both of these factors here in the denominator so those would be subtracted. So it'll look like this, natural log of 4x squared minus 7, that factor is cubed, plus natural log of e to the 5x, and then minus natural log of 2x, and minus natural log sine x. Certainly this 3 can come down in front, okay? So that'll be a 3 right there. And same thing with the 5x. If you wanted to do that, you could move that down in front. Okay, so now we look ready to do a derivative. But what I want to bring your attention to real quick before I do that is number 7. I still have number 7 on the screen for a reason. I'm not necessarily going to jump to natural log rewrite right away on number 7. Why? Can anyone see why? Take a look at number 7. Well, take a look at some of your factors here. Do you see those factors can divide? So I can try a technique called separate and reduce. So I am going to go through a rewrite, but it's going to look a little different. This is going to be the first term divided by 3x minus 7 quantity squared plus the second term divided by 3x minus 7 quantity squared. So here's my rewrite. So now I can see in the second problem over here that this is just y equals, that will divide and leave two of the 3x minus 7 factors times e to the x plus 3x minus 7 quantity squared divided by itself leaves a factor of 1. So that term would just be a 1. I can differentiate from that orange step right there. So again, could you have used natural log? Yes, but we're trying to go for an efficient derivative so that I can eventually do something with these derivative equations. Okay, so let's keep working on number six here now. I'm ready to do this derivative. Here we go. So the derivative of natural log of a function is the derivative of that function over itself. And now I'm going to go term by term. So I have three natural log of this function, so that will be 3 times the derivative of the function is 8x over itself, 4x squared minus 7, plus natural log of e is 1, okay, natural log of e is 1. So I really just have 5x for that term, right? So the derivative of 5x is 5 minus Natural log of 2x, well the derivative of 2x is 2 over itself, 2x, and then minus natural log of sine x, so the derivative of that argument would be cosine of x over itself, sine x. And then again, if you're solving for f prime, 
you're going to need to multiply both sides by the original function, which means this whole right-hand side gets multiplied, so I will rewrite that now. And again, my original function is up here, f of x, so that all got copied down right here. And please do not forget that you want your whole right-hand side from the step prior to be multiplied by that original. So it is very important because if you only put parentheses around this part, so if I leave off this bracket and this bracket, you're only actually multiplying this last term by the original function and that's not what you mean. So these brackets or parentheses around that previous you know steps right hand side is very very important. Note that I also did not you know simplify some of these terms. I could write cosine over sine for example as the function cotangent. I could divide those twos. There's some things I could do but this is a fine derivative. Now let's look at number seven, that orange step there, because I did that rewrite and divided those factors, or excuse me, the denominator of 3x minus 7 quantity squared into each of the numerator's terms, I have, I think, a much easier derivative to work with. I'm not necessarily going to use natural log, but you can. I'm just going to use product, and then this part would require chain. So I don't think two rules is going to be that big of a deal with power, not a big deal. So y prime equals product rule here. So I will do the derivative of 3x minus 7 quantity squared. So I'll bring down the 2, keep the base the same. Now it's to the first, but I'm not going to write to the 1. I don't want to confuse myself. Times the derivative of the inside, which would be 3. All times e to the x. Plus, now I'm going to leave the 3x minus 7 quantity squared and I'll do the derivative of e to the x, which we should know is e to the x. And the derivative of plus 1 is 0. You could factor something out, so I can factor out an e to the x, I can factor out one factor of 3x minus 7, and that is going to leave me with um, my first term would have a 2 times 3, so it'll leave me with 6 plus this quantity 3x minus 7 from the second term. So that'll look like e to the x as a factor, 3x minus 7 as a factor, and this would be 3x minus 1. Again, this step that I'm ending with is certainly equivalent to my raw derivative up here, but if we are trying to set this equal to zero or any other numerical value, it might be helpful to have it in factored form. Again, I really want you to see six and seven next to each other so you can start to see how to be efficient in doing some of these derivatives. So on number six, it really did simplify my derivative process to insert a natural log on both sides of the equation because natural log was not there to begin with. But number seven, it didn't necessarily help me or I had a more efficient technique that I could try before just resorting to natural log. Okay, one more. Now we've been talking a lot about natural log, so what if we have log base three? Well, we should have a change of base formula that we know. So we're just going to go through, through a quick rewrite here. And that will be log of my argument or log of my tall. So I'm going to say natural log of x squared minus 5x plus 7 over natural log of the small, which small in font size, not necessarily small in value. So natural log of 3. This should be equivalent, and you can test it out if you're unsure. You can look at log base 3 of 7, and this is the exact same number as natural log of 7 over natural log of 3, which is also the same as common log of 7 over common log of 3. All right, so I've done this rewrite. I'm going to rewrite it one more time just so you can see something. This natural log of 3 is a numerical value. It's a constant, so I don't need quotient rule in this case. So I like to see this as a coefficient. So 1 over natural log of 3 is really just a coefficient to this natural log function. Okay, so now I know coefficients stay when I'm calculating the derivative, and then I have 
natural log of this argument here. So I'm going to do the derivative of that argument. So it becomes 2x minus 5 over the argument itself, x squared minus 5x plus 7. And I'm done. So I don't necessarily memorize a new log derivative. I just use my change of base formula that I remember to turn it into natural logs, and then I can use what I already know. I hope you found this video helpful. Thanks for watching.